Hi everyone, good morning. Welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a 2013 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. And the customer complaint is, well he said, <laughs> he explained it to me as the starter stays on even if you let the key go out of the crank position. I'm like, well that's kind of weird, is the starter being stuck on? No, I reproduced the complaint. He means a long crank time. So it cranks until the engine starts, but it just takes a while. And here, you know, here's what it does. By the way, there's just one code stored in the engine computer. P0340 camshaft position sensor circuit. Okay, well that, that makes sense. That would definitely cause a long crank time, depending on the strategy of the computer. Some cars won't even start without a cam sensor, but this one will. So let's shut it off. Key on, and then I'm just gonna... Okay, that time it started just fine. Try again. There, uh, uh, yep. So definitely an extended crank it was trying to catch, but could not. So let's go right into the ECM. Uh, read our data stream. There should be a camshaft, like a CMP counter. So let's go into the... Uh, data stream here, let's do engine speed. Vehicle speed sensor. I'm looking for CMP and CKP counts. So I guess it doesn't have that there. Okay, CMP active counter, angle, Command, sensor, desired camshaft position, is there a crankshaft position, there's variance, let's try that, so it's not counting, and it says zero RPM, so let's shut the truck off, Okay, so we're going right for this camshaft position sensor. We want to see um, signal, 5 volt reference, and ground. Pull up a wiring diagram and do a cam crank correlation. There should only be two sensors, a cam and a crank. It's a push rod engine with one camshaft. So next thing is, I want to see if this is a hard fault. It looks like it is. But let's just clear out all the DTCs. I already recorded the report. <clears throat> All right, beautiful. So key off, key on. Yep, still a hard fault. So if we go into our ECM, you want to reread the code. Excellent. P zero three forty hard fault. So. It's not an intermittent problem, which means it should be easier to diagnose than an intermittent problem. We're going to need the scope anyways. So the lesson of the day here is, before hooking up the scope, getting all fancy with wiring diagrams, just do a visual inspection. This thing, again, it lives on a farm. What are the possibilities that rodents chewed some wires? Well, <laughs> let's get under here. And... Da, 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 da. Right there. The sway bar is a little in the way here. Let's see if we can zoom in on this. Carnage. Yep. That's your problem, dude. So, shouldn't be too big of a deal. We'll unplug this connector. Now this connector is for the cam sensor and 
the VVT actuator system. So we'll unplug it, do some harness repairs right here, and this truck should be back in action. And make sure to document everything. To always take a picture before you start repairs to prove to the owner that this is indeed the problem. So first thing <clears throat> I'm going to do is what um, solder on some extensions to to these wires that were actually shortened by the groundhog. That's what the owner said. He has got a groundhog problem. So we'll solder on a couple inches of fresh wire. I got the soldering iron set to 400 degrees, so it should melt the have an easier time fusing these wires together. There's one. That's two. Actually, it looks pretty good. I'll take the clips off of here. And people have asked, what are these clips? It's just household um, ace, you know, regular wire. You strip the copper out of the insulation, bend it, and solder on a couple of alligator clips, and to prevent damage to the wiring insulation you can put on some shrink wrap onto the alligator clips they work fantastic there we go so now we'll slide some shrink wrap over these two bend the wires to keep the shrink wrap where you want it because gravity makes it want to slide off okay then we'll take our handy torch Sweet. There we go. So those two are now ready to be soldered back to the harness. So the trick for these extensions is you want all the wires to be approximately the same length so the harness doesn't get all funky and all the wires will have a, um, <clears throat> I mean they shouldn't have any pull on them if it's long enough but uh, you can see this extension here I cut off and re-stripped and we'll do the same for the second extension and the purple wire I just soldered back together since there wasn't much length missing and that should be it for the repair. We'll wrap it up, make it look nice. Okay, so we got three wires soldered, two with extensions, and then a little electrical tape on this blue one. Let's just wrap it up and plug it back in. All right, here's the finished product. OEM. <laughs> Looks like no one's ever been here. Plugged right back into our 
sensor and actuator harness. So let's uh, fire up the truck, clear the codes, make sure it's good to go. All right, we've got the key on. There's our code. Let's clear it out. Yep. Okay. Key off. And see how it starts. Perfect. No DTCs, that's what we like to see. And just to be 100%, let's go to our camshaft actuator data. We see that our CMP is now counting. RPM is actually showing now, that's good. We can take it for a test drive, make sure everything works. Owner also wanted me to do an oil change and that's it. So quick and easy, never uh, omit the visual inspection. Uh, in this case, went right to the problem, pop off the engine covers uh, underneath and there it was, chewed wires. So four out of six wires we had to repair. Uh, should be good to go unless the groundhog makes a comeback. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Uh, a little bonus footage. So, on these HD trucks, the TPMS system is usually set to trigger when the tire pressure falls below, I think, 70 psi. And sometimes for an unloaded truck, the owner wants to run a little lower tire pressure, like 60, and the TPMS light comes on. So what we're going to do is, uh, with the ThinkTool Pros, pretty cool feature that in the RCDLR, Remote Control Door Lock Receiver, that's where the TPMS data is, uh, under Special Functions, Tire Type Pressure Selection. So here we can input the tire type and set recommended front tire pressure and recommended rear tire pressure. We need to input the, all of the parameters and then um, hit reprogram. So these are load range E tires, max PSI 80. We're gonna set the threshold at 60. So I input all four data pids and we'll reprogram. Test completed, okay. Tire learning active, so let's go ahead and re-initialize the sensors here. And it shows you which sensor to activate, which is pretty cool. What's up, Zia? It's done. So we'll shut it off. Should be good to go. So now the TPMS light will only come out if the tire pressure drops below 60. Sweet! Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.